Welcome back to Naval Gazing at Camp David. This week's guest yacht is from the most popular catamaran brand in the world and delivers a level of space and luxury and usability that Sylvia would certainly appreciate. Of course, we're talking about the brand new Lagoon 51. Today, we are going to review its specifications, pricing and layout against three uh, comparable new yachts, do a full tour asking what would Sylvia say, navel gaze at an innovation and or an adjustment that might make life aboard a little easier, and just a hint, uh, privacy at the touch of a button, and some things should change and other things really should not. Uh, then we'll have a look at the used market for three to five year old comparables and this is a crowded field in this 50 foot spot so I couldn't settle on three I went with five. And finally we're going to give it a Dave score and we're going to compare it to all the other yachts that we have looked at thus far. As always, we have a wine pairing with our yacht. And this week we head across to the west coast of France and Lagoon's headquarters in Bordeaux, where we find Chateau Le Pieu Emilien Bordeaux. Uh, Le Pieu has a family legacy of wine growing since 1610. 15 Amaro generations have cultivated the land without ever using an artificial product. This non-filtered wine is produced from vines planted with 85% Merlot, 7% Cabernet Sauvignon, 6% Cabernet Franc, 1% Malbec, and 1% Carmenere. Emilien is obtained by a two-year decantation in Faudres and used barrels. A Faudre is a generic French wine term used to describe a large wooden vat which is between 20 to 120 hectoliters in size. One hectoliter is 100 liters. Hey! Another great four out of five. Now, moving on to our yacht. The uh, exterior of the Lagoon 51 is very attractive, as you can see. Um, one of the key features is the integrated solar panels. They're fantastic, both on the cabin top and on top of the, the, the rigid bimini. Um, the uh, other change they made is the extension on the sugar scoops, which really makes access on and off uh, the mooring easy. And uh, last but not least, they've moved that mast way forward so you don't have the compression post in the uh, saloon. Now, I question a little bit the naval architecture of moving a mast that far forward on a boat like this uh, and its impact on performance and ride comfort. Uh, but there you have it. So, looking at the new comparables, uh, you can see the sail area on the lagoon is substantial at 150 square meters. The only thing bigger would be the Sun Reef 50, and that's a monster boat at over 30 ton. Um, you can also see the extended sugar scoops on this one. Looking down on the cabin top, there's those solar panels, and of course the other claim to fame of the new 51, uh, other than the extended sugar scoops, the integrated solar, the mast forward is finally a, a flybridge that makes sense. So proper lounge, proper seating, uh, and it looks really good. Uh, now, looking into the saloon. This is where I think they went sideways on their new design. Uh, prior, you had that full wrap around settee in the front on a step up that allowed you to see everything, gave a fabulous sense of space. And you had that wonderful island piece in the center with that highly innovative uh, coffee table slash dining table that moved back and forth. Uh, I saw no problem with the compression post where it was at, the way they had integrated it. I thought it was fantastic. Uh, they've eliminated that by moving the mast forward. They've replaced the um, most of that island with a, a forward-facing settee, and they've uh, eliminated the starboard side of that wraparound settee, uh, and then slapped in a more traditional dining table, which uh, I, I think they've lost out on some real innovation there. 
Uh, now, all of that would be fine and dandy if they had given me an athwartship berth down in the, in the hulls, just like uh, FP has done, but they didn't. So the uh, Lagoon uh, 51 has the same uh, um, hull design, uh, accommodation design, as the 50 did. Uh, there's no additional space, there's, there's really not a lot of changes. Um, so I really think they missed the boat on, on, on this design opportunity. Uh, looking at closer at the specifications here. Now you can see that the DeFore kills it on the pricing, uh, but Lagoon's not bad. Uh, Lagoon, uh, by moving that mass forward, really took their mainsail up, and they lead the pack there. Uh, in addition, um, their tankage is, and engine size uh, kills all the rest, as could be expected on a, a cruising, chartering machine like this. So uh, no real surprises there. They've done a great job as usual. Now at this point in the presentation, I'd just like to quickly ask you, if you like this, subscribe, uh, hit a thumbs up, and then share this out using that lovely function that uh, YouTube offers to a couple of like-minded sailors. I'd really appreciate it. Okay, stepping on board, the first thing we see uh, beyond those lovely extended sugar scoops is the Lagoon uh, tender lift and swim platform. It's fantastic. Uh, scan around shows the uh, the sense of substance in this cockpit, the, the, the integrated ladders, all of the teak, uh, the beautifully finished um, uh, bimini top with the integrated uh, and recessed shades that you can just drop down, that beautiful teak table there, um, real substance and it folds out. Uh, you could slap a, a, a coat of lacquer on that and it would just add a, a, an absolute sense of class. All of their steps, all of their dolphin seats, everything has a sense of substance. Here's the, uh, the barbecue, beautifully integrated, um, huge space. If you look at the Corian top, even on the sidebar here, you can see that they went with something of a color and a texture, and they've got the fiddles. It, they've done a fabulous job. Moving into the saloon, you can see they still retain the wine holder. Uh, at the bottom of the forward-facing settee here and they've done as they always do they do a beautiful job on their upholstery they don't do a lot of uh stitching or anything but what they do do is make the upholstery look like giant pillows that you just want to sing into and they do that beautiful um, um uh, uh piping uh, in an offset color and I just think it looks outstanding. The other thing you can see here is the leather inlay on the um, stainless steel handles. Look at the countertops here. Corian, beautiful integrated fiddles, but it's not just Corian, it looks like marble. They've done nice colors, nice textures. Uh, look at the integrated um, indirect lighting. It's all over the place. It looks fantastic. The other great job they do here is look at these inlaid leather pieces or wannabe leather pieces. Um, they uh, look absolutely fantastic. Uh, and then uh, the uh, decking looks excellent. Um, the, uh, here's where you've lost the um, wraparound. Uh, not sure where it went to. Um, and then you've got the windows from the saloon bringing light into what either is the walk-in closet or uh, a, an extra berth. So uh, the other thing I noted here is uh, on their exposed fiberglass, they leave it shiny, which to me uh, speaks of plastic uh, and takes away from the elegance. Uh, I really far preferred the matte finish that um, Balance did. It really gave it a sense of feeling, a perception of quality and substance. So um, I'm not big on exposed shiny fiberglass, but you know, that's nitpicking. So let's move into a little navel gazing as I promised. Um, one of the things in these boats is they have massive windows everywhere. They have hatches, they, and they're often not that easy to reach. So why are we still using manual blinds, manual curtains that are so clunky? Um, uh, you can have uh, Dometic electric blinds, a Dometic electric uh, shutters, Dometic electric uh, um, uh, 
hatch covers. You can even have Dometic electric curtains. Uh, and all of this then, you're standing in the middle of your saloon, you hit a button on your remote and boom, you have privacy. You're not crawling over stuff. I know it sounds picky, but this is being done in um, Beneteau, the parent company's Yacht 60 for years. So I'm not sure why it hasn't made it here. Uh, you can see just how lovely that would be, especially in some of these areas. So looking around the kitchen again, looks fantastic. We're going to head down into the port hull. This is the passenger hull. Again, that lovely feel of the leather-like material on that grab handle. It looks so rich and elegant. There's an extra fridge there for you, fridge or freezer. Here's your um, aft berth. Uh, they've, they've integrated lovely soft touch uh, paneling. Uh, the, they've got hatches in all the windows. They've even got a, a lovely little tiny desk there with the shelves, the, the, the chrome uh, um, uh, hold bars and integrated leather panels in the back. Looks fantastic. The head is beautiful. Dry head. Uh, again, they've used a Corian that looks like marble. They've integrated into the floor, even into the, sh uh, into the shower floor. It looks super. It gives it a total feeling of class and elegance and substance. Um, and you can see throughout this, you, so you've got uh, a dry head for each cabin. Look at the hardware on the doors even. It really looks good. Now here's that quite innovative uh, third cabin on the port side. Um, it's great and it just disappears uh, when you don't need it or you can use it for storage for luggage. Uh, again, here's the bow cabin. It, it looks good. Um, it, it, even though it's smaller, you still have access up the sides enough to make the bed properly. I think they've done a really great job. So let's head up the stairs here. Uh, again, you can see the indirect lighting. They've used it all over the place. And man, does that ever leave an impression. Even in the daylight, it creates a warmth and a class. Look at all the refrigeration space you have here. Let's have a quick glance around. I'm not excited about the standard uh, table that goes up and down. I like their old table that they move back and forth. A little more navel gazing now. So, let's look at this. This is the old 50. I love that wraparound settee. This is the new 50 and they've chopped off the, uh, the uh, starboard side of it. Don't know why, because I'd have expected there'd be a, uh, 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 an athwartship berth downstairs to pay that off. Apparently not. What they could do though is bring back that wraparound settee. Why change something that's working? It, it created such a feeling of openness. Now. If you really wanted to upgrade the model moving into the 51, you've got the uh, up, up, up top uh, sky bridge done properly. You've extended those uh, sugar scoops for fabulous access. Let's get the uh, wraparound settee, or if you really wanted a change, how about we introduce the forward access to the co forward cockpit, the interior access to the forward cockpit. Look at what this would look like. You have not only a separate dining area and a lovely separate lounge area, all of you know I, I appreciate that in a, in a yacht, but then the safety and convenience of the forward access to the forward cockpit, uh, and, and then you have the, the privacy when you're med mooring. I, I think that would have absolutely lit this model on fire. Um, now, if you want to take it one step further, here is the, the hulls, uh, the accommodation on the existing 51. But, as with uh, the forward uh, cockpit access, which they have on their 60s and 70s, every boat, 52 and up, has an athwart ship berth. So, it can be done, it can be included. You got the hulls, they're wide enough. Why not slap in the athwart ship berth in that monster forward bathroom, which you've actually already done nicely, a nice job on. But uh, look at how this would impact the usability and the, and the, and the perception of space in this yacht. Um, you know, I know that there's great access on either side of the fore aft berth on the Lagoon 50 and 51, but I was stunned when I brought my wife into a 46, which is almost the same width, and, and, and pointed out the, the, the size of the bed, the space on either side, and she goes, whoa, that's tight. And I suddenly thought, whoa, I'm looking at boats, she's looking at houses. 
And if she isn't on this boat, I don't go anywhere. So that's why the athwartship berth with the full access around, proper height, feels like home. It's not for me, it's for my wife so that I can actually get out on the water. And it works. And FP's worked it, Bali's worked it, you know, a lot of the other brands. Uh, uh, Leopard really needs to work it. Um, okay, so heading now down into the owner's cabin. Here we have again the lovely uh, insert leather, beautiful settee with the, the, with the uh, contrasting piping, great carpet, it looks so nice, makes it so cozy, very nice uh, aft berth, of course for a four aft berth it's got great access up either side, I can easily make that, it's got great light, great ventilation, um, nice soft touch uh, paneling. Um, it, it looks elegant. It, it looks like a condo. It's, it's very, very nicely done. And yet, it feels like a yacht. And, and, and there is that, that balance, that knife edge balance. Now look at this. The walk-in closet that they introduced on the 50. It's back on the 51. That was a fabulous innovation. Should always stay there. Looks great. Um, my wife would love it. It would make her feel like this is home. And would get me out on the water faster. Uh, heading back into the bathroom. Now this is executed beautifully. Look at the, um, the Corian countertops. They look like marble. You have two sinks. You have lots of counter space for the pharmacy that goes on there. Beautiful Corian on the floor of the shower. Separate head uh, compartment here. I mean, what more could you ask for? Uh, I think Lagoon has absolutely knocked it out of the park. Uh, with this head compart with this with this whole bathroom area. Remember, if it's liveaboards, it's the same as a house. Kitchens, bathrooms, kitchens, bathrooms. So uh, let's have another gander about and then head up into the saloon again. Okay. Avoiding the traffic, up we go. And again, look at all the indirect lighting. Looks fantastic. Kitchen looks great. Moving out in this space, that teak table looks fantastic. Now we're heading upstairs. Look at all the teak inlay on, on, on all the steps. I mean, it really does add a sense of class. Up we go on to the flybridge, and there she is, a proper flybridge. Now, for those of you who think that moving the mast back would eliminate this flybridge, not so. I've seen lots of Lagoon 50s where the owners have actually torn out uh, the factory uh, flybridge lounge and put in a proper lounge that looks very similar to this. So there is the space to do it. Uh, the other thing is, I'm not sure about those forward lounges on the cabin top uh, without, a, without a, a bar around them for safety. I wouldn't feel comfortable. I wouldn't feel comfortable having kids or anybody up there. So you could get rid of that and just put more solar on there. But this is a fabulous space. Uh, they put a, a really nice hard top on this. Um, you've got windows so you can see the sails. You've got ladders so you can access the boom. Uh, nothing's too high. I wouldn't want to be up on that thing in a heavy sea, but you know what I'm saying. It's, it, for what it is, it's really, really, really well executed. Heading on to the side uh, decks, you can see all the hatches are, are flush with nice ventilations in them and good water drainage. Uh, look at even their um, dolphin seats. They've put detail on there. It's not just a slab of teak. Um, the uh, cockpit's very nice. They've retained the trampolines, which would be great with a beanbag on there. It's, it's romantic. Um, but wouldn't this be awesome with a door and that cockpit sunk in a little bit for a little more privacy and then you could use the, the, the overhang lip that Lagoon has on their vertical windows to incorporate a telescopic bimini that would come out over there. Now they have incorporated a couple of elements like that in the 51 such as the pop-up shade from the back uh, as well as two poles that go in the front and you extend a shade over it. But uh, touching a button and have that thing slide out and giving you shade would be awesome. Looking at the outside, you know, this is a handsome boat. It's not super sexy, 
but it's a handsome boat. I could get in my uh, dinghy, drive away from this, look back and be proud. Um, and so, you know, you can see the integrated solar. It looks so elegant. There's nothing slapped on about it. Everything looks purposeful and integrated. Uh, that hard top bimini is gorgeous. You can see the windows in it that you can see your sails through. Um, you know, it's a, it's a handsome, handsome vessel that anybody would be proud to own. So let's look at uh, pre-owned comparables. First up is a Fountain Peugeot uh, Saba 50 2021, and they're asking 1.1. Uh, so we, that's a, that's a one-year-old boat, 1.1. Um, uh, uh, we're looking, we're using the rule of 50% on top of the base for a sail away price. Uh, so theoretically, the Lagoon 51 brand new one is 1.1 USD sail away, the same as a used Fountain Peugeot Saba 50. Sorry, I'd go with the Lagoon. Um, moving on, next is the Bali 4.8. Uh, and the Bali 4.8, they're looking for 1.3. This is a 2021, again, a one-year-old boat. Uh, 1.3 versus 1.1 for a new 50. The Bali has a lot going for it. That, that uh, garage door, the athwartship berth, a fabulous uh, upper flybridge, interior access to the forward cockpit. Um, it, 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 I'd, I'd, I'd consider that one. Uh, moving on, uh, next we're into the Leopard. As of course, you know, I have a soft spot in my heart for the Leopard. We're looking at 1.275 on this Leopard. It's a 2021, again, one year old. Uh, that's uh, about 200 grand more. Uh, I'm probably getting a bunch of options that this owner's throwing on there. Uh, yeah, that'd be a hard choice. I'd probably touch the Leopard on that one. Here's one out of the box, a, a, a Wave 50, a 2021 Wave 50. Um, now, full carbon, full electric, 16-ton-ish, uh, uh, so a full four-ton lighter. Um, space, like, like unbelievable space in this thing. Uh, the only thing, uh, so, so I'd say it's worth the, 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 the 400 Delta. Um, the only thing that makes me hesitate is it's a new uh, producer, unknown, and I've left three emails for them and heard nothing back. So I, pr I don't know if I'd go that way. Um, and then the Dufour. Now the Dufour at 680. Whew, that's a 48-foot boat. It doesn't have the interior elegance or quite the comfort that the Lagoon has. But on the outside, that's a sexy beast and she looks gorgeous and she has lots of space up on that flybridge. She's got a lot going for, for a uh, $400,000 Delta. Ah, you'd really have to work me to move me away from there. Um, and then last but not least, of course, at a comparable 2021 uh, Lagoon 50. And this is a three cabin owner's version with the uh, luxury package. So very comparable to what we just looked at. It's got my wraparound uh, uh, saloon. Uh, doesn't have that nice uh, upper flybridge, uh, but basically everything else is the same. And we are looking at uh, 900. So that's a $200,000 Delta and I can have it tomorrow and it's probably brand new and I got extra stuff on it. Uh, I'd, I'd go with the used one. Okay, time for the Dave score. So looking at the Dave score here again from Sylvia's eyes, um, the Lagoon beats out the Outremer, uh, which is understandable given that this is from Sylvia's perspective, the Outremer 51. Uh, it's uh, tied with the Bali and the Wave, which makes a lot of sense. Uh, it's behind the Windaloo and the Neal, which again makes a lot of sense. Those have a lot of comfort, a lot of space, and they have performance, and they have innovation. Uh, so I think they deserve their place in, in, in this list, uh, where they are versus the Lagoon. Uh, so that's where we are. Just a quick reminder, if you go into the description, I've got a link to uh, Dave's score survey and you can participate and I'll share that as soon as I have uh, uh, lots of folks um, participating with me. 
one last reminder, please subscribe, give me a thumbs up if you can, and share this out using the share feature with a couple of like-minded sailors. That would be fantastic. That's the end of our review of the Lagoon 51. Great boat, really enjoyed it, but you know, they could have a category killer there if they added in uh, the ba added back the wraparound front settee, added in the front uh, forward access to the uh, um, uh, to the cockpit, and then did uh, a, a 52 style athwart ship berth. Absolute category killer. Don't know why they didn't. Don't know why they won't. Hope they do, uh, because wow, would that be a boat that Sylvie would love? So now. As promised, a little cultural uh, sidebar. Uh, we're looking at the art of the uh, Bordeaux region where uh, this boat originates. And I found a lovely artist, uh, Bertrand Jean Ridon, uh, born 1840, died 1916. Uh, and he was known as Odilion Ridon after his mother. Uh, he was a symbolist painter and a printmaker born in Bordeaux. Uh, he started drawing as a young child at the age of 10. He was awarded a drawing prize at school and uh, that encouraged him at the age of 15 to begin formal studies in drawing. But on the insistence of his practical father, he switched to architecture for a real career. Uh, unfortunately, he failed to pass the entrance exams for the Paris school and was uh, back at it in, uh, in art. Uh, which, thankfully so, because I do love this piece. This is called the Flower Clouds. Uh, it was, uh, he did this in 1903, his style is symbolism. Uh, the genre is cloudscape, the media is pastel on paper, and if you want to see it in real life, just visit the Art Institute of Chicago in Chicago, Illinois. And with that, I bid you adieu, and wish you a great week, and hope you'll back, you're back with me next week. Thanks very much.